This is Dr. Ajay Kanakamedala from NYU Langone Health presenting our technique for in-office needle arthroscopy for the treatment of anterior ankle impingement. Anterior ankle impingement is a common cause of anterior ankle pain and restricted ankle dorsiflexion. It can occur due to bony and or soft tissue impingement. Ankle arthroscopy is now commonly accepted as a safe and effective treatment for anterior ankle impingement. Arthroscopic treatment of anterior ankle impingement typically consists of resection of osteophytes as well as soft tissue impingement. The introduction of new needle arthroscopy systems with improved resolution and arthroscopic tools has made performing complete arthroscopic procedures feasible in the office setting. In-office needle arthroscopy offers a number of advantages over traditional ankle arthroscopy in the operating room for anterior ankle impingement, including faster recovery and reduced costs. This case involves a 22-year-old female with six-month status post-ORAF and talonavicular arthroscopy for a navicular stress fracture with associated chondral lesion, who presented with several months of anterior ankle pain and stiffness. She had tried physical therapy and had a corticosteroid injection with temporary relief. Preoperative plain radiographs showed a healed navicular stress fracture. Preoperative MRI showed a stress reaction within the Taylor neck, as well as the presence of scar tissue in the anterior ankle joint, consistent with anterior ankle impingement. In summary, this patient is a 22-year-old female presenting with anterior ankle impingement. Treatment options can be broken down into non-operative and operative modalities. Non-operative treatment options include NSAIDs, activity modification, and physical therapy. Operative treatment options include traditional arthroscopy performed in an operating room, as well as in-office needle arthroscopy. Indications for in-office needle arthroscopy of the ankle are similar to those for traditional ankle arthroscopy. In-office needle arthroscopy of the ankle can be used to address a variety of intraarticular ankle pathologies, including, but not limited to, loose bodies and anterior ankle impingement. Contraindications include local skin issues and allergies to local anesthetic. Standard portals and anatomic landmarks are shown here. The intermedial portal is made at the level of the joint, just lateral to the tibialis anterior tendon, and the anterolateral portal is made under direct visualization, taking care to avoid the superficial perineal nerve. The patient is positioned comfortably in the supine position, and local anesthetic is delivered into the portal sites and intraarticularly. The patient is prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion. However, care is taken to ensure that the patient can view the arthroscopy monitor. After a timeout is performed, the procedure is begun. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a tiny, tiny little nick here in your skin. All right, that's all we do. Make a very, very small incision here. A very tiny. You didn't feel any of that? No. Nope. Perfect. Okay, and then this is our little intervention. You can see it's blunt. and. Um, so we just advance that in fairly easily. You okay? Yeah, doesn't hurt. <laughs> Perfect. All right, and then we're going to put a little camera through that, and the fluid should be flowing already. You can see right away, we're right into the joint, and that's inside your joint there, Ali. We're right the second you can see. So, this is a lot of the fronding and some of the scar tissue that's formed in front of your joint right there. So just to, be, to confirm exactly where we are and that Ali doesn't have any pain, we've already marked out the SPN. You can see it there. We're going to keep well away from that. Um, but this is the portal we're going to use. Can you feel that? No. Okay. I'm going to give you a little bit more. And you can see as we do that, we're coming in right where we need to be in front of the joint there. Okay. And this is just the same, no different than your standard arthroscopy procedure. But you can see now we're right into the joint, and we're exactly where we need in terms of our working portal to address all of this. Because we already know what to do here, we're going to be using the small shaver. Um, Ali's a, a runner and a soccer player, so she's got this typical anteromedial and anterolateral um, impingement, and so we're now going to start. Uh, recycling some of that. 
Using the 2mm shaver, any sources of anterior impingement, including scar tissue, synovial hyperplasia, and distal anterior tibial exostoses are resected. The patient can be instructed to range their ankle to identify sources of impingement. So what I'll get you to do, if you don't mind, is just move your ankle up and down very slowly. And you can see, there's your talus joint moving up and down. And then the cartilage looks really, really good there. I did expect uh, it to do. Okay, so now we're advancing back into the lateral area, the area of interest, anterolateral lateral impingement here. And you can see as Ali goes into dorsiflexion, just dorsiflex again, Ali, if you don't mind, bring it up. You can see this area here can become impinged, and this is, causes some irregularity along the cartilage border here. Subsequently, the redundant AITFL, which in this case is causing anterolateral impingement, is resected. The excessive portion of the AITFL can be removed without causing syndesmotic instability. So this is a very tiny biker. Again, its profile is just two millimeters, but it's very strong. You can see we're just putting it again into the portal and, uh, and we're into the joint. So it looks ginormous. We sort of, so when Ali looks at this, he probably thinks it's a massive big piece of machinery going into a joint. But in fact, this is really, really tiny. And what we're going to do is take away a little bit of that part of the ligament, just a very, very first, the anterior few millimeters of that ligament because that is an area that is uh, subject to hypertrophy and to impingement. So we take that away without affecting uh, the stability of the syndesmosis at all. You can see how easy it is and how strong uh, these binders are. I'm going to change the portal size right now. Okay. Again, this is classic here, what we're seeing on this picture, this is synovial hyperplasia. This is on the anteromedial side. We've changed uh, positions, and I'll get Ali just to very gently bring her ankle up into the dorsiflex position, and you can see how that gets sucked in there, all this synovial, angry synovium here on the anterolateral side, and a little bit of um, mechanical overhang there also. So you can put the foot down again. Again, using the 2.0 millimeter shaver, now from the anterior medial portal, any synovial tissue or bony causes of anterior impingement are identified and resected. Dorsiflex your foot as much as you can there, Ali. And you can see how all of that tissue gets sucked into the joint and pinches, and it's that anterior impingement um, which causes the pain, particularly on maximal dorsiflexion. So that's what our job is to get rid of all of that and to prevent it recurring. So just go down again. Perfect. Thank you. And that's again an advantage of the uh, needle arthroscopy is that you can really, the patient is actively involved. They see the pathology um, and they're actively involved in addressing it. It is important to follow the tailor neck down anteriorly, as can be seen here, to evaluate for any other sources of impingement. Further debridement is performed of any excess capsular tissue impinging on the neck of the talus. So now you can see the front of the joint is certainly a lot clearer now. Um, and at this point, what we'll do is we'll start taking away some of that, um, some of that anteromedial impingement, that bony exostosis right there. We'll take that away in a moment. The shaver is then exchanged for a three millimeter burr, which is used to complete the resection of the distal anterior tibial exostoses. So we're going to have a really good look at the bone before we do anything. Um, and there it is. And so we're going to start shaving that away. So if there's any pain at all, you're going to let me know. So it'll feel a little bit of a vibratory sense as we do this, um, but there should be no more than that. Adequacy of the debridement can be confirmed by noting that the tibial surface has been resected back to the anterior border of the medial malleolus. The bony debridement can lead to postoperative hemarthrosis, and so we believe it is important to initiate early mobilization and range of motion beginning on the day of the procedure to avoid postoperative arthrofibrosis. When Ali now moves, um, moves her ankle, just bring that up a little bit, Ali. You can see there that there's no impingement there now at all. That looks absolutely really quite clear. Um, now, some a little bit of inflamed tissue over here, which we'll take away, but by and large, when we look at the entire ankle, 
right across the front now, and it's very different than it was 10 minutes ago. So again, we're looking at the front of the joint. You can see that anteromedial resection is incompleted. We brought the anterior aspect of the um, tibia right back to the level of the medial mal, which is right here. All that synovial hyperphagia and scar tissue, which was present here before, has gone. And you can see right in the front of the joint is really quite clear now. We're going to change portals uh, one more time just to confirm that the lateral side is completely free. So what I'll get you to do, if you don't mind, is again just um, dorsiflex and plantarflex. So bring it up as much as possible. And so when Ali brings it up as much as she can, again, you can see that little divot there. That's not from the scope. That's from the original um, hypertrophic AITFL, and that's very common in athletes to see that, particularly if there's anything, any instability. That's not a full chondral loss. We won't need to do anything about that, um, but we will take a picture of that if you could take a picture of that, Nick. Okay, so that's all she wrote. Well done. Thank you so much. I'm going to get rid of some of that blue in there right this day. But because these um, portals are so tiny. You don't need the suit. If you don't need the suit, you do anything else. In postoperatively, the patient is allowed to mobilize with full weight bearing is tolerated using a rigid postoperative shoe. Ice and elevation are encouraged when not ambulating for the first 24 to 36 hours. The patient returns on postoperative day five for a wound check. The patient is encouraged to perform ankle pumps and circumduction exercises every hour for five minutes for the first 24 hours. Full weight bearing and range of motion are allowed immediately. Formal physical therapy is started on day five postoperatively. The lead author, Dr. John Kennedy, performed a study on his series of 31 patients, which is currently in press. He found largely favorable outcomes with in-office needle arthroscopy for anterior ankle impingement. In his series of 31 patients with mean follow-up of 12 months, Patients reported an overall positive experience with mean rating of 9.7 out of 10. Patients reported significant improvement in their promise, pain, interference, and intensity scores, and 94% of patients expressed willingness to undergo the same procedure again. Multiple other studies have also reported successful outcomes after arthroscopic treatment of anterior ankle impingement. In 2014, Walsh et al. reported on a prospective series of 46 patients who underwent ankle arthroscopy and debridement for anterior ankle impingement with a minimum of five-year follow-up. They found significant improvements in foot functional index scores as well as ankle dorsiflexion. In 2015, Zweiers et al. published a systematic review of arthroscopic treatment of anterior ankle impingement. They included 19 articles in 905 patients with a mean follow-up of 35 months, and they found that ankle arthroscopy and debridement appeared to improve patient-reported outcomes as measured by the AOFAS. They also noted a high satisfaction rates of 74 to 100%. They found a pooled complication rate of 5.1%, the most common of which was mild nerve symptoms, likely due to portal placement. We will now review pearls and pitfalls for this procedure. Patient selection is critical, as some patients may not be able to tolerate in-office needle arthroscopy. It is important to have a careful preoperative discussion with patients regarding expectations for a wide awake procedure. For patients who might require a bony resection, it is important to provide adequate periosteal local anesthetic injection. Lastly, it is important to engage the patient during the procedure. This can be achieved with conversation as well as eliciting active range of motion to identify any sources of ankle impingement. Common pitfalls include not injecting enough pre-procedural local anesthetic or not providing enough time for the anesthetic to take effect. Other pitfalls include iatrogenic nerve injury due to portal placement or inadequate resection due to failure to identify all sources of ankle impingement. Our references are shown here. Thank you.